Well, this is, uh, it's great to be back live again with you guys. I, uh, I, I saw the bulletins that we had sitting out there uh, from the last time we were together. March 15th. So it's been four and a half months since we've been together. And it hit me as I was driving uh, into church this morning that the last time we had communion together was at the beginning of Mark. So it's been five months since we've had communion. And, uh, um, you know, for the 30 years that I've been a part of the church, this is the longest time I've gone between two communions. And so we will be having communion together later in the service. But just like everything else has changed in our lives over these last several months, we'll be doing it using these little cups. Um, and, uh, and so uh, if you don't have one, feel free to, to, to move around during this service. But as we move around, maintain social distancing. So uh, if you don't have a cup and you need to get a cup, then you can go get one back there. Um, we're not going to be passing the plates um, for an offering. So uh, we have the plates back there. So uh, if at a certain point you want to go and place your offering in the plate, you know, please do that. Um, when we're taking communion, um, if you would like to come up and pray while you're having your elements, then feel free to come up and maintain social distancing while we're doing that. I mean, it's, it's going to take a while for us to figure out just how we do this. Um, and then over time, we'll be bringing, you know, more elements into our church life back together. And hopefully before too long, everything will be just, just like it was before. Um, for those of you, we're, we're recording the service now, so that our, our, our people who are at home are going to have a different, um, a, a different experience than what they have had uh, during this time. So, um, you know, oh, put your hand up and wave, you know, to the people that are at home. You know, we, we're glad that you're worshiping with us too. And um, we'll put this service and the second service both out there on our YouTube channel as soon as we can get them out there. And so you can rewatch it uh, at that time. But um, I think those are really all the announcements I need to make. Let us just prepare our hearts and our, and our minds for worship this morning. I'm going to take my facial covering off, but we ask that you maintain yours so that uh, we can continue with worship. This is great to get to sing with you, and I am so glad that we get to worship together. Would you please all stand and join in singing hymn number 2126, All Who Hunger.
please be seated. because the kids aren't sitting here. At least in my house, I was looking, expecting them to be watching. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, have you ever watched a wrestling match? I know that Hudson, when I went to deliver his vacation Bible school packet last Monday, was pretending to watch, uh, be in a wrestling thing because he was watching Scooby-Doo and the wrestlers. Well, wrestling is a very popular, what? Scooby-Doo and WWE. Um, wrestling is a very popular sport all over the world. Wrestlers must be strong and determined to win. Wrestling is not a modern invention. Sulinda and I used to watch it with our dad when we were growing up. Though it is one of the oldest sports in the world, it dates back thousands of years, even into the Bible. In this Bible lesson, Jacob spent an entire night wrestling with an angel of God. After an entire night of wrestling, God's angel told Jacob to walk away. Jacob left the wrestling match with a new name and a limp from his hurt hip. We sometimes struggle with God too. We may want to do things our way instead of his way. When it is hard for you to when is it hard for you to obey? When's it hard for you to obey, Hudson? All the time? Okay, he's honest. <laughs> Well, um, I have ice with me today. I have ice cubes. And if I were able to give each one of you an ice cube, I would let you choose how to make it melt. And the ways we could have it melt would be hold it in my hand, which it's already melting like that. Or we could put salt on it. That's what they do when the roads are icy in the um, snowstorms. They put salt and sand on it so that it's less slippery. We could get a straw and blow really, really hard on it. Or I could use, what is this? A blow dryer, a hair dryer. I could use a hair dryer on it. Which one of these things would make the ice melt the fastest? Which one would make it melt the fastest, Hudson? Hair dryer, that's right. The hair dryer would make it melt the fastest. Well, if I didn't give you the choice of the hair dryer, you would have had to choose one of the other ways. Well, um, ice cubes melt faster with the hair dryer because they have more power. And with God's power, we can do greater things. We can stop, do, we can stop doing things our way using salt or our hand or the straw, and we can use something with more power like the hair dryer. We can surrender to God's will and trust that He always knows best. So use God's power and not your power to melt things and to do things in life. Let us pray. Dear God, please help us to remember that you are the one who knows what is best for us. We can surrender to your will and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Every color, every race, all are covered by his grace. Jesus loves the little children of the Thank you. 
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me. Thank you, Victor and Young Suk. Um, I'm going to take this off. And I know you guys would like to take yours off too. Um, but thank you for, um, for maintaining our requirements that we're supposed to do during this time. Um, I want to thank, God, there's so many people I could thank. I, I, I want to thank the, the guys that have been maintaining our, our grounds for us during this time to keep our church looking beautiful. Um, I want to thank um, those who have been um, faithful in our um, uh, our arm food pantry. We've had to do that a little bit different during this time. So we've um, we've had the people be in their cars, and then um, we get the groceries for them, and then take them out and put them in their car. So that we've had to change that. I want to thank um, Victor for um, for stepping up and 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 helping us to have worship at home in a digital way. Um, the way that all got started, if you remember, our, our last service was March 15th, and then we realized that we weren't going to have any kind of a of a time together for Easter. And so Victor said, well, I think I could do this if y'all could put parts together. And, and, and he did it. And then he kind of got stuck with it for the next <laughs> four months. Um, so, um, you know, thank you for that. Thank you for the staff, for the things that you've been continuing to do. Um, our, our lives have changed so much over these last four and a half months. We, um, We've had to, uh, to, to learn how to Zoom, right? And so the, the youth have been meeting uh, through Zoom. Um, we've been having our church meetings through Zoom. Um, with the conference, all, all the things that we do with the conference have been through Zoom. Uh, we started the, the Sunday night um, the small group that we've been doing through Zoom. Um, you know, Tanya has been uh, running things out to the kids, you know, to their homes, so they have um, things to, to keep connected with. Um, there just have been so many things. Um, we have uh, had to learn about the payroll protection plan and, and to get the PPP loans so that we could continue to, to, to pay our staff through this time. So um, practically the whole time that we've been separated from each other, the PPP loan has, has paid for our salaries which has allowed us to, to build up a little bit of cash, which is great because normally we're struggling from month to month. And so this has been a benefit to us. We, we're continuing in the process to, um, uh, to get a cell tower uh, put here on our, our property that will uh, be a stealth cell tower. So it won't look like a cell tower. It will look like a... Um, um, like a, a monument kind of a thing, if you can picture that, um, that will have like the cross and flame on it or something. So it'll be a way to see our church from a further distance and it'll give us some income coming in on a monthly basis. Um, there's been just a lot going on during this time. Um, it, it feels like I, I, I feel like I've been home more than I've ever been, but I'm but I've been working harder than I've ever been at the same time. It's weird. Um, 
And, and, and with, the, with, with all that's going on with the pandemic uh, and, and, and how, our, how it's affected our lives, um, and then with all of the unrest that's been going on with, um, um, with, with the, uh, the, the rise again um, of, uh, of Black Lives Matter and, um, and social injustice, um, it reminds me back of the 60s. You know, um, we're having that time again. Um, it's just, uh, 2020 is going to be a year, I think, that we remember, you know, for the rest of our lives, just like 9-11 is a time we remember. And what I have sought during this time is to, to come to the Bible and to pray so that in this in, in this time where it feels like we're having a social earthquake and the ground is moving under us, it's, it's the Bible and it's prayer, it's God and Jesus Christ that has brought me back on level ground and has helped me to, uh, to stay grounded myself. So over these last several weeks, we, we've been looking at Romans 8. Paul teaches about the body and the spirit as being two ways to be in the world. The ego-centered, selfish way of life is life in the body, and it leads to sin and death. As opposed to that, there's life in the spirit, which is living the way that God wants us to live, which is being unselfish. Then Paul teaches God has adopted us as children. Therefore, we can call God Abba, Daddy. And we're, we're then sisters and brothers of Jesus. And we inherit everything that Jesus inherits from the Father. That inheritance will one day include spiritual bodies that will no longer be subjected to, to decay and death as we are now. But instead, we will be living in, in, um, in spiritual bodies forever. And then Paul then teaches that although we don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit does. And so when we go to God in prayer, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with our Father. Then Paul teaches that God has redeemed us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, so we are already in a proper relationship with God. And Jesus, who's earned the right to judge us, instead, He sits at the right hand of God, and He pleads our cause. So since God has done all of this for us, nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ, and we have no reason to live in fear. We can instead live in peace, unafraid. Paul next turns to something that's been bothering him. So now we move into Romans chapter 9. It's something that he's been struggling with God over. Paul grew up as a pious Jew, becoming a Pharisee himself. He's taught to observe all 613 laws in the Bible, and he tries to do so. When Jesus shows up on the scene, then Jesus disrupts the status quo by breaking biblical laws. And then teaching that he's being more righteous in doing so. Jesus is basically saying that he understands the spirit of the law. And that the spirit of the law is more important than following the letter of the law. Well, being a Pharisee, Paul is a letter of the law kind of guy. And so, what Jesus is teaching is dangerous to him and his understanding of Scripture. Therefore, Jesus has to be silenced. And so then Paul persecutes followers of Jesus until one day he encounters the risen Christ himself and his life is forever changed and he becomes a follower of Jesus too. This is when he encounters an internal struggle then with the people who he's learned under and who he's been aligned with his whole life. If God has chosen to redeem the world through 
God's incarnate Son, then what happens to God's promise to bless the world through God's chosen people who reject Jesus? If God's chosen people, the Israelites, the Jews, reject Jesus, then can God's promise no longer be fulfilled? With that as a backdrop, let's hear from Paul. So if you have your Bible, and I hope you do, then uh, let's open to Romans chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Paul says, I'm speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. As my conscience assures me with the Holy Spirit, I have great sadness and constant pain in my heart. I wish I could be cursed, cut off from Christ if it helped my brothers and sisters who are my flesh and blood relatives. They are Israelites. The adoption as God's children, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises belong to them. The Jewish ancestors are theirs, and the Christ descended from those ancestors. He is the one who rules over all things, who is God, and who is blessed forever. Amen. Can you sense Paul's anguish? as he's trying to deal with this. I mean, he wants so much those who he loves to be included too. Why can't they see, like he does, that Christ is a part of God's plan? They already possess so many of the elements of God's redemptive plan for the world. I mean, they're the ones who God chose to adopt as the people who will bless the entire world. It's to them that God made covenants. The second century Greek bishop Arrhenius lists four great times when God has made covenant with us, with God's people. The first time is the covenant with Noah after the flood. And the sign of that covenant is the rainbow, which will remind God never to destroy the world by flood again. The second is the covenant with Abraham. And the sign of that covenant is circumcision. The third is the covenant with the nation entered into on Mount, on, in, entered into on Mount Sinai. And the basis of that covenant are the, the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. And then the fourth covenant is the new covenant in Jesus Christ. It's to God's chosen people that's, that's given how to worship. And even Jesus Christ is from the, family, the, the chosen family of God. And so the way that Paul works this out in his mind, as he shows us in chapter 9, is to, is to come to understand that the existence of a true Israel is not a matter of racial descent. Rather, the existence of a true Israel is a matter of the continuing gracious election of God. The history of Israel, then, isn't the history of a race. It's the history of a choice. A choice made by God, which includes God's intention one day to be gracious to all the world through Israel. See, it's, it's, it's because of that that Abraham's line continues through Isaac, the child of promise, rather than through Ishmael, the firstborn child of Abraham. That's also why Rebekah's son Jacob is the one through whom the chosen people's lineage continues. In Rebekah's case, we're dealing with twins. They both share equally in, in biological heritage. If the true Israel is a matter of physical descent, then the line has to go through Esau, because again, he was the firstborn son. But it's by God's choice alone that Jacob is chosen instead. Luther put it this way, 
It follows irrefutably, one does not become a son of God and an, or a daughter of God and an heir of the promise by descent, but by the gracious election of God. And that's the point that Paul makes. Paul shows that God's promise of blessing all humanity through an elect people cannot be frustrated when some of those who belong physically to that people reject the promise. Their destiny doesn't lie in their own hands. Destiny allow, uh, lies in God's hands. And we see how Paul works this out, moving from his despair at the apparent failure of God to the certainty that God will accomplish the plans to redeem the world. He does it by seeing how God is involved with helping us, especially when things look hopeless. So consider the terror of the Israelites in the face of God's apparent failure to deliver them from the pursuing armies of the Pharaoh. That terror is met by Moses' assurance that God has not failed them and they will be delivered. And that assurance becomes reality when they cross the sea and the pursuing armies are destroyed. Or we can go into the New Testament and see the same theme in the Gospels. The disciples again and again failed to understand Jesus and they failed to act as He teaches and one piece of scripture that illustrates this is, is found in Matthew with the disciples alone in the storm and Peter is sinking in the sea while attempting to, to reach Jesus. Has Peter failed Jesus? Or, or more to the point, has Jesus failed his followers as they battle the storm and as Peter sinks into the sea? Yet Peter despite his lack of faith, is saved at the critical moment to continue his life of discipleship. What these stories in Scripture already imply will be shown conclusively to be the case. When God raises Jesus from the grave, God's power is such that no failure, however desperate, can thwart God's redemptive plan. We see Paul wants so much for the rest of his people to join with him in believing in Jesus. And he will willingly suffer whatever is necessary if he can change their fate. In chapter 11, Paul will teach that we, as Gentiles, are like wild olive branches that have been grafted into among the other branches of the olive tree. And having been grafted in, then we share in the root which produces the rich olive oil. Now, why would God do this? Well, for one thing, I think it's simply of God's nature to be inclusive. And God needs us to continue to bring all of God's children to Christ. I think God also sees how it may be possible for the world to be blessed through us along with the Jews. And our world sure needs some blessings today, doesn't it? The ideological divide seems to be as great a chasm as it has ever been. Where at one time people on the right and people on the left could sit together and, and listen with open receptivity to what each other has to say. Now we are more apt to close our minds as soon as we get a, an idea of where the other person is coming from if they're not coming from the same ideology we are. Our nation is in a mess right now, and we blame people on the other side, whichever side we're on, for being the ones that have caused this mess that we're in. And extremists on both sides now feel free to, to, to walk in our streets, creating fear and despair to us all. This global pandemic has only heightened the differences that already existed between us. So how is our world ever going to return to some sort of normalcy? 
Well, I think it will, at least in part, have to come from us. We are the ones who have been grafted into God's chosen people to bless the world. We, as Christians, have to rise above what it is that divides us and choose to want to understand one another, choose to want to work together, and choose to join hands with all people to make this a better place for our children and our children's children. God always seems, sees a remnant among God's people who will be the ones to continue moving the plan of redemption forward. So who among us is going to be a part of that remnant? Who among us is going to help lead us past our differences? You have been chosen to be a part of God's plan. Now you may not feel like you can do great things, but you can do your part. So will you answer God's call? Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for choosing a people through whom to bless the world. Thank you for choosing us to be grafted into, to be adopted into your chosen people. We know you can see how we can bless the world if we will but be faithful. Help us as we pray through the power of the Holy Spirit to be led in the way you would have us go. Thank you for loving each one of us like there's no one else to love, and yet loving each one of us the same. Continue blessing Asbury as we continue to seek your guidance. So through us, your blessings continue to flow to people who need to know how much they're loved. Come, Holy Spirit. Give us the gift of a gentle yet unwavering conviction on all things essential, a generous posture toward one another on all matters non-essential, and a penetrating and incisive wisdom to discern the difference. And now we continue with the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now we're going to share together in Holy Communion. And like everything else in this COVID time, it's going to be different than what we've done before. Um, we have these little communion cups to use. And let me tell you how they're put together. There's, there's a big tab that kind of has a bend to it, and that's the one that you open second. On top of that, there's a, a little tiny one that you have to pull, and that's how you get to the little wafer. Um, feel free to go and get a, um, a cup if you don't have one. And then after you've taken the wafer, then you can open up the big one underneath and get to the juice. Um, I've learned some things during this time. Um, one of the things I've learned is um, I love my wife more now than I ever have. In the seeming like 30 years that we've been together, this is the most time that we've ever spent together, you know, concentrated uh, like this. And, uh, and, and during this time, we, we've come to find out that we really love each other, uh, which gives me great comfort um, for the years ahead. Um, I've learned how much, uh, how important it is to, to be with those who I love. Um, and, and we've tried to do that, you know, socially distancing through, through Zoom and, and different things. It's been great to see the faces of you that I've seen in those ways. But um, it doesn't replace being able to be here physically with you. 
Um, and I'm a touchy-feely kind of a guy. So what I want to do is hug you all, but we can't do that yet. Um, but we will one day. We just have to get through this time. And as I said before, when it seems like the world is just shifting under me and I can't seem to get a foothold, I come back to God. I come back to the Bible. And I find, and I find my firm footing. And so that's why we, we have communion, so that we can remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How He gave the greatest sacrifice of all. He, he, he gave His life for us so that we would be able to live with Him and with God our Father forever. We remember the night that He was with those who He loved. And during the meal, they, um, He took the bread and He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, He took the cup and He he gave it to each of them and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so as, as we take these elements, a part of what that means is we are saying yes to Jesus. We will be your body that you gave for us. We will be your blood. We will be your spirit in this world because you gave it to us. Some of us have, have had COVID hit really close to home. Um, some of us haven't been touched by it, you know, hardly at all. But it seems as, as, as we go on and on, it seems to get closer and closer. And so, I want you to think about your loved ones. Um, think about those who have passed on. Think, think, think about the, 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 the people in the hospitals, um, in the places where it's really hit hard, and, and how they're, uh, they're pleading with us to do the things that we need to do to, to help slow it. One of our pastors that, that, that was here in our conference went down to San Antonio a couple of years ago to pastor a church down there. They opened for one Sunday and they had to shut back down again. Um, I don't want that to be our experience. And I pray to God it's not. Um, so, um, as you enter into a time of prayer now, um, lift up uh, those you love. Lift up those who have, or, who have cared for us. You may take your elements um, and, and you may come up and, and kneel if you would like to in prayer and take the elements. Just maintain our social distancing, okay? Let us enter, enter into prayer.
Please stand as you're able and join in singing, Here I Am, Lord. To, uh, to also give a, a shout out of thanks to Vicki. You know, one, one of the things that happened during this time is, is we, we started putting out the, uh, I guess like the second edition of the Arbor on Sunday morning. Uh, and so we've been doing two Arbors a, a week during this time. And, uh, and I was thinking, I, I probably don't want to do that anymore now that we're meeting together. And then after the last one went out, I got an email back from one of you that was out of town and saying, thank you so much for, for sending this. The internet connection here is not good enough that I can watch the video online. And so this helps me to be able to worship with my church family. And so I thought, okay, well that's, we, we, you know, we got to keep that going too. So um, the hardest, one of the hardest parts about this has been when one of you has been in the hospital and I haven't been able to come and visit. Um, never before in the, my 22 years of ministry has the hospital turned me away. 
um, but they wouldn't let me this time. So um, I, I know it was hard for you too when you had a loved one that was in the hospital and you couldn't be with them. So um, I just pray to God that we can get past this as soon and as safely as possible. You are Israel. God has chosen you to be the ones to bless the world. So when we leave this place today, how are people going to know that we are Christians? They will know we are Christians by our love. So hear this as your benediction. May the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. You can take your cup and your offering there on your way out. Socially distance your way out, please.